Hi folks, I'm Seamus from Outdoors Inspiration. This is Petra, my German Shepherd. <laughs> and today we've got a tale to tell from Belliver Forest. Now the story that I want to tell started on a day just like today. It was November and pretty much this sort of weather. And I like to walk and run here when the weather's bad. Because when you can't see your hand in front of your face on the rest of the moor, at least there are known tracks within the forestry. And some of the surrounding trees break up the wind. And there's absolutely oodles of Bronze Age archaeology in Belliver Forest. Here on Lakehead Hill, uh, it's got some magnificent examples. Now the story that I want to tell is about something that I saw that night. I can't explain it. Maybe you can. And this is a fabulous example of a Bronze Age, early Bronze Age kist. It's a burial chamber. Go on in Petra, onwards and upwards. So, forgive me wandering off from the storyline there, but it is a prerequisite of any shaggy dog story that the narrator wanders off irrelevantly, comes back to the subject and then brings you a great big anti-climax, which this probably will be. But I'm gonna tell the story anyway, and thank you for watching this far, if you have. Now, when this incident or episode or event, whatever you want to call it, happened, Petra wasn't around. She wasn't even a glint in her daddy's eye at that time. I had two other dogs with me. One of them is still my dog, Kira. She's a Rottweiler, but she's quite elderly, so you don't see her out and about very often. My other dog was Buzz, or TFS as he was known, that flipping spaniel. Now Kira, as I said, is a Rottweiler, and in her youth she was quite a, a muscular looking dog with a larger head. She's got a full tail, and she really is very, very beautiful. But being quite elderly now, and she's got a few health problems, she spends most of her life cuddled up on the sofa, where she's very comfy. The forestry in these sites, due to the nature of plantation, is quite thick and dense. And for the most part, it's quite impenetrable. And I suppose there's lots of wildlife that lives in the forestry here that you don't normally see. A really good example is the red deer. Uh, most people are unaware of their presence. I've seen them on a couple of occasions. Beautiful and magnificent.
bringing us back online with a shaggy dog story, we ran to the top of the tour and broke left down here. Light was failing, but I hadn't had my head torch out yet. I knew I needed to get back to the car. And there's a route that I'd take down through here that cuts down through the forestry, into the bell of a hamlet, and then back to where my car was parked. Petra, come here. Well, anyway, I stopped just about here. That's interesting. I just saw a large moving object going down through the line of the forestry here now. Fawn in colour, probably a deer. So, I stopped about here to take my breath and look down below me. I could see Kira, my Rottweiler, running right in front of me here. And her shape's fairly distinctive. Large head, low centre of gravity, muscular build, and in that light, completely black. And as she went past me, I noticed her collar was missing. She wears a pink collar. So I called her and she ignored me. And I whistled and she carried straight on through here. I was quite unsure how she got there. And most of all, I was a bit niffed that she didn't come when I called. And I looked down beside me and she'd been sat there the whole time. Now it was getting late in the day and I don't know what possessed me. This black figure with a large head, low center of gravity and muscular frame had just run past me and I whistled up my dogs and ran after it. And as you can see, you can see for quite some distance here. But the animal was too fast for me and headed off into the moorland. And then suddenly it dawned on me that what I'd seen might not have been canine. But that brought about a kind of inner turmoil because I'm not really a big cat believer, I'm going to be honest with you, because otherwise there would be reports of carcasses and the limbs of trees where big cats would tend to sit would be worn away and you see scratching. And not to mention the physical evidence of the cats themselves. And I have to say I ran a little bit quicker that night to get back to the car. And I got perhaps another kilometre down through the forestry and I came across a farmer on a quad bike with a couple of dogs. And so I asked him if he'd been up on the tour with the dogs. He said no, he, he was working his way through the forestry down below and had been uh, for about an hour. And as his path for the course, I didn't have a camera, I didn't take a picture. I was dressed in Ron Hills, a wind top and a bum bag and that was about it. When I got home, I wouldn't say I was rattled by the experience, but I was just perplexed and growing more and more of the opinion that I couldn't explain what I'd seen. Come on, you. I'm not a believer in big cats roaming the countryside. The evidence just isn't there for me. But nonetheless, I was struggling with what I'd seen. So I googled big cats on Dartmoor and I found a site run by the British Big Cat Society. The guy who runs it was local, he was in the Plymouth area and there was a telephone number so I had a bit of a chat with him. And from the description that I'd given him, he was fairly convinced I think that what I'd seen was a big cat. And if you google big cats on Dartmoor, there certainly have been plenty of sightings and some evidence of big cats. I can actually remember the story back in 1998 when there was a sighting of what was believed to be a young male lion at Rangerton on the south side of the moor. A paw print was found and experts from the Dartmoor Wildlife Park were called. They, uh, they confirmed it was that of a lion. The police were obviously quite concerned about this and uh, were out looking for it and cautioning people not to go hunting it down. There's another story that was run by the Daily Telegraph and the Daily Mirror that when Mary Chipperfield had to give up her animals, there was a consignment of five lynx that were meant to go to the Dartmoor Wildlife Park. And when the consignment arrived, there were only two but five tags. The way the story goes is that she said she'd broken down and somehow the other three animals had escaped. And what the story says they believe happened was that she released 
her favourite breeding pair onto Dartmoor. Now this was 1978 and up until 1981 it wasn't illegal to release wild animals into the countryside and her husband, widower, maintains that this event never happened. Now I don't know whether I believe any of this stuff about big cats. I do know that I can't explain what I saw that night. It's feasible, it could have been a large dog, but it didn't interact with my dogs and kept on running and there was nobody else in sight. Up until that evening, I had big cat spotters consigned to the draw marked alien abduction, but I don't want to be disrespectful because I've changed my tune. I'm open to persuasion. So, uh, <laughs> If you think there's big cats out there in the countryside somewhere, perhaps stick it in the comments below. Let me know what you think. You might be able to convert me. And the usual stuff applies. If you like what we do with the channel, perhaps you might have a look at one or two of our other videos. Give us a thumbs up, leave comments, and I would be really flattered if you wanted to follow us. There's a subscribe button down there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> that would make my day. Meanwhile, the weather's cleared up a bit, but the sky's beginning to bruise and it's getting dark. So Petra and I will be on our way home. We'll see you on the next video, folks. Take care, stay safe.